This is Task Spoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log by doing one randomly generated task at a time. After completing the medium tier, I'm ready to attempt some of the longest and hardest challenges yet as I move on to the hard tier. Welcome to Season 3 of Task Spoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode number 80 of the Taskmoon series. In the last video, I did some achievement diaries, some hogany homes, and I murdered a large spider many times. And we ended by rolling a Guardians of the Rift task, which is why I am here. I am kind of excited for this. It's been a while since I've done like a skilling minigame, I guess. I mean, mahogany home sort of counts, but... Uh, yeah, there are lots of useful things I can get from uh, Guardians of the Rift, mostly the of the eye pieces, which will greatly help for a bunch of achievement diaries in the future, so I don't have to do as much runecrafting. So yeah, I think I have a few pearls. I have 105 pearls, so we shouldn't need too many. I think I wanted to buy the hat next, which is actually the most expensive piece left. But I thought the hat would be the coolest because you can combine it with the other tiaras and then it works as all of them, which is just sort of neat. So yeah, I'm just going to go get started. If we take a look at the collection log here, you can see what I'm missing. Uh, the three of the eye pieces are probably going to be what I end up getting just buying them with pearls. But I can also get the red die from the rewards guardian. I can also get the abyssal lantern from the rewards guardian, which would be great. I'm probably not going to buy the Ring of the Elements just because it's more expensive. And I could still get the Tarnished Locket from the Intricate Pouch. And then there's absolutely no shot that I buy the Guardian's Eye. So that's what we're after here. Uh, I predict that I will end up just getting the 400 Pearls to buy the Hat of the Eye. But uh, the Abyssal Lantern would be an excellent pull from the Rewards Guardians, that's for sure. I currently already have seven searches available of the Rewards Guardian, so I guess we'll start with those. There's a very small chance that we'll complete the task already, uh, but might as well go for it. Okay, yeah, that was to be expected. We did get two Pearls pulls, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, now we'll go start. Oh, I wasn't recording, but I got 66 rune crafting. It must have been from all the Tears of Gothics. You ever start doing Guardians of the Rift and then you realize you never swap to the Lunar Spellbook and so you can't repair your pouches? Yeah, me neither. Because I didn't make it back in time to get into this game, I'm just going to do these 13 searches that I have available. So, <laughs> here we go. Damn, I got a duplicate Catalytic Talisman, but that's not particularly useful. I guess that lets me make one into a tiara, which I can imbue into the Hat of the Eye, and then still have a Catalytic Talisman for something, if I would ever need that. I don't know. Oh, 67 runecrafting. Nice. Okay, well, I gotta go get dinner, but I got 23 searches here. Uh, don't mind the imbalance. Uh, I keep seeing, like... The cosmic runes or the death runes, whatever the catalytic rune altar is that's up, I'm always like, oh, that rune's actually useful for me. So I'll go and make them, and then I get way behind on the elemental, but I'll even it out later. For now, I'm just going to do these 23 searches and hope for the best. Wow, that was like the worst searches I've ever had. Only 12 pearls and 23 searches? That's very sad. All this Guardians of the Rift reminded me that I had a Tears of Guthix to do, so here's your reminder as well. Go do your Tears of Guthix. You're welcome. 68 rune crafting. Okay, 25 searches. I just went and checked in the bank and I'm at 210 Abyssal Pearls, so we're just gonna send it and see what happens. Okay, nothing from those, but we did get three intricate pouches, which do have a chance to give me the locket, I believe. The tarnished locket, so maybe we'll get that. No. Nice. 
I don't know if anyone at Jagex has ever seen any of my videos, but every once in a while I suggest something and then they end up doing it. So my newest suggestion, please change the cells so when you use them on a barrier, you get runecrafting XP even if it doesn't heal the barrier. Because I hate when I click on the thing at the exact same time as someone else and theirs heals and mine doesn't and then I get no runecrafting experience and then I've just wasted time and my charge cell. And it sucks. Okay, that's all. Alright, 19 searches here. Just gonna go ahead and do them. Uh, I have no rhyme or reason to when or why I'm deciding to do them, but I just sort of feel like it, so let's do it. Alright, no item, but we got a pouch. Okay, uh, 71 pearls, pretty good. We are at 309 pearls now, so we still need about 100 more, so just gonna keep going. Well, I wanted to try out doing some combination runes at Guardians of the Rift, so I needed to make some binding necklaces, and I got 77 crafting. That's all. I figured that I'm using Magic and Butte anyway just for magic experience, so I might as well try some combination runes. I've never really done this before, so I'm sort of curious to see how it works. I don't know what these do. Is this like you get both elemental and catalytic? That'd be convenient. Nope, just elemental. I don't know. Alright, 18 more searches here. Uh, making combo runes is kind of weird, but I guess better. I don't know if it's worth it in the long run, but it's at least giving me something new to do. And yeah, we're just going to do these searches, hope for the best, see what happens. Alright, well, nothing too special other than a lot of pearls, actually. 79 is really good. I think that puts us very close to the 400 mark. I need 12 more pearls. Uh, or I could just buy one of the other ones for 350 right now. No, I'm going to get the 12 more. I just realized that when I redecorated my house for the diary, it got rid of all of my tile markers. And I'm debating if I want to just go and make my house the old ugly one again, or maybe I'll just leave them all empty, and if you ever wanted a tile marker in my house, then there's lots of room. So, now that I just need 12 pearls, I'm just gonna do my searches after, like, every game. So, here we go. Hey, 12 pearls, look at that. Alright, 418 pearls. We are buying the Hat of the Eye. Heck yeah. I went and made a catalytic tiara so I can do this with it too. And now it is also a catalytic tiara. So cool. Uh, let's go get a new task. Alright, here we go. Back on the spreadsheet. Complete the Guardians of the Rift task. And let's see what we're doing next. Get a unique from Demonic Gorillas. That means I get to do Monkey Madness 2. Okay, sure, let's do it. If we take a look over at the Monkey Madness 2 wiki page, we can see that I have everything already, which is very convenient. Uh, the quest itself is a little bit long, lots to do, uh, somewhat challenging boss fight at the end, but to be honest, shouldn't be too much of a problem. And very good experience rewards, so excited about that. Royal Seed Pod is amazing. Access to Demonic Gorillas is great. Uh, all this other stuff is pretty cool too. <laughs> so we're just we're just gonna go do it, I guess. All right, Mr. Narnode, let's go kill some monkeys. I don't have the requirements. Interesting. Apparently, I need to have unlocked the Tree Gnome Stronghold Balloon route. So I'm gonna go do that. Okay, what about now? Aha! I still remember on Monkey Madness 2 release date, I was trying to actually do the quest, like, the way the game intends you to do them, without a quest helper or a guide or anything. I logged on and immediately just went and tried to figure it out myself, and that was a mistake. <laughs> Turns out I am bad at RuneScape quests unless I have someone telling me what to do, so... <laughs> I'm going to save you guys the pain of watching me fall over and over again in the agility puzzle. I have been here for like 25 minutes just trying to make my way through this damn dungeon. Aha! I've made it to the end, finally! 
Uh, this is usually where I would go and restock, but I don't think I'm gonna take much damage because I'm pretty sure I can flinch him and take no damage, so I'm gonna try that first. I already sort of knew where to put him because I've done this before, but, uh, I didn't know Quest Helper would even show you where to flinch him. That's kind of cool. I forgot they make you run through this dungeon as well. Right after the other agility dungeon too. Just a final slap in the face as you never have to come back here. Now, it says to turn on protect from melee before talking to this guy, but surely he won't hit me for a 56. Ow! This shortcut might be the best shortcut they've ever added to the game. You save so much time compared to having to go all the way around and there's a clue step up here, and there's a quest objective. This is this shortcut, amazing. All right, time for everyone's favorite part of the quest, the airship. Yay. So I've learned that if you just time it right, you don't actually have to stop for the monkeys at all. You can just walk right through them. Oh my goodness, get me out of here. I forgot how annoying that place is. Oh, thank goodness. All right, on to the last part of the quest. Just got to kill some gorillas and then kill Gluff, and we should be done. Uh, but it has been a while, and I'm pretty sure this is a somewhat difficult fight, so we'll see how it goes. So, demonic gorillas switch attack styles every three attacks, and they actually added this little... Uh, text queue when they were going to switch attack styles. I don't think, I think it's the same for every attack style that they switch to, so you can't tell which one they're going to based on the thing that they say, but apparently you can tell if you have game sounds on, like they make a different noise, but I never play with game sounds, so that doesn't really help me, but it is nice to see they added a little thing to show you when they switch, so even if I don't have game sounds on, I can just guess it wasn't right, but sometimes it'll work. Okay, I went back, got rid of all my melee armor and weapons and whatnot, and restocked the supplies. I am ready to take on Gluff. I don't think it'll be that hard, but I'm also usually overconfident with this kind of thing, so uh, I know you can safe spot him at the beginning. I assume if I just, like, stand over here, he'll get caught on one of these tiles. I don't know... It says predict from magic in the third phase. I don't know if he has a magic attack in the first phases, but... Uh, I think we're just going to go jump right into it. I don't think it'll be that hard. I know that wasn't the cleanest way to fight him. I know you can bring like a longer range range weapon and essentially safe spot him, but it was easy enough. I think that was the easiest, laziest way for me to do it, so. I'm so upset. My recorder crashed when I was trying to record the experience drops, but we're done. Look at that. Look at all the experience. It's right there. Uh, I think we also get more training. We have to go back to a patrol and talk to some guy and we get even more combat experience. But yeah, we're done! Let's go! One of the really cool additions to the rewards from Monkey Madness 2 is you don't need to wear a Grigri or a Monkey Speak amulet on a patrol anymore. The monkeys don't see you as a threat, so they're not aggressive, and somehow you've just learned to communicate with monkeys, so you don't need that either. So that's really cool. In fact, I'm just gonna drop my Monkey Speak amulet, because I don't think, eh, maybe I'll keep it. I don't know if there's a purpose for it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you go over here, I'm just going to go and get my training real quick. So if I talk to Duke over here, he will give me two times 50,000 experience rewards for any combat that isn't prayer. And I don't think this is super relevant to me, but if I put them both on magic, I'll get a magic level. So I'm, I'm going to do that just because it'll be fun. Well, that was the longest training session ever, but 97 magic. Cool. 
So, this is the setup that I'm going to be looking at for Demonic Gorillas. I got the Carol's Top, Varax Skirt, super nice, got those from Barrows. Uh, everything else is pretty standard. And this is making me realize that my next upgrade almost definitely should be a Fury. I am at 77 crafting, I would need to get to 85 to plus 5 boost for it. And if I did that, as well as got a Zenite potentially from this task, I could also make the Zenite ring, which would be huge for stuff like Zalra and, well, like anything. Because my two best rings right now have a plus one prayer bonus or a plus four slash bonus. And those both suck compared to an imbued ring of suffering. So next up on the list for upgrades is probably going to be a fury hopefully i get a task that i have to do some crafting for some reason and i can get that a little bit closer but that would be huge and other than that i think we are ready to go real quick if we take a look at the demonic gorillas uh they are level 275 which is pretty high but because you can negate essentially all of their damage uh with a little bit of variance with the prayer switching they're not too bad to camp and we are going to be after anything on this table. Now, the Zenite is the most common and the most useful drop. So hopefully we get one of those. But anything here would satisfy the task. And if you add up all of the drop rates of everything else, it is more likely we don't get a Zenite. It's probably more common to get one of these uh, five other drops. But hopefully we get the Zenite. And even if we don't, uh, the rest of the drops are all very good. Demonic Gorillas are infamous for being very good for money. Pretty much any time anyone gets a Slayer task, a uh, Black Demon Slayer task, they usually go to Demonic Gorillas just because the extra accuracy and damage from the Slayer task with the Slayer Helmet is super useful for killing them, and it makes them a very good money maker. So that is probably also what I'm going to do from now on in the future if I get a Black Demon task. But for now, we're going there off task and just hoping for a Zenite Shard, and we'll see what happens. I forgot to mention when I was talking about my setup, but the Arclight is the best in slot melee weapon here because they are considered demonic creatures. It has a higher accuracy and damage, and the Blowpipe is considered the best in slot range weapon when you don't count the Tebow or Bofa because those are too hard to get for me. So uh, I actually have pretty good weapons, pretty good armor. The only thing I'm really missing, like I said, that Fury would be huge, but other than that, my gear is very good for this, so I'm quite pleased with that. And we are ready to go. Okay, here we go. Starting with the Demonic Gorillas. Uh, I know there is a single zone. I know Multi is past this arch. As you can tell, I went over there. Ow. I went over there and they all tried to kill me. Uh, so I'm not really sure. I think there's like a single zone up top or something. I might try and go because going in Multi is very painful as I've learned. So, yeah, just gonna kill this one because I've already started and then find the single zone. But, yeah, here we go. Ah, yes, I remember this now. This is the singles area. Okay. A little trick that I learned, when they change attack styles and they're on a range attack style and you take a step away from them, if they walk towards you, then they're gonna be doing melee. If they don't walk towards you, then they're gonna be on the other ranged attack style. So you can see right now he's ranging. After this hit, I'm going to take a step away and turn on Protect from Mage. You can see he doesn't walk towards me, so I know he will mage me here. Because if he was trying to melee me, he would take a step towards me. So you can sort of predict most of the time what they're going to swap to. But if you're meleeing them, or rather if they are meleeing you, then when you step away, obviously they're going to be switching to a certain type of range attack style. But you don't really know which one until they hit you. So... I'm not immune to all damage here, but if I play well, which, let's be honest, that is also a possibility of not happening, then uh, I'm still going to be taking some damage, but I will try my best. It's been a while since I've killed these, so it'll take a little bit to relearn the methods, but I was hoping that it would, it would die, and then I would get the drop. Yeah, there we go. I also just realized that I took my herb sack instead of my seed box, which I meant to take because they dropped noted herbs, so I wouldn't even be able to use it, and I'd rather have the seed box for this exact purpose, but oops. Alright, it's all starting to come back to me now. I should hope so, at least. I've killed thousands of these over my time playing Old School RuneScape, so I would hope that I'd remember how to kill them quickly, and yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Alright, first trip done. Even while relearning how to kill them, I managed to get 14 kills, so that's not too bad at all. I was expecting even less than that, so that's pretty good. Hopefully the next one will go even better, 
and I'm going to remember to bring my seed box. And yeah, it was pretty good. I'm going to bring a few more prayer potions, a few less food, and hopefully I don't take too much damage. And I'm actually going to put a screenshot on screen right now of the loot that I got from those 14 kills. Because, man, these things are so good. Like, three rune plate skirts, that alone is like 113k alks. Couple magic seeds, couple torstal seeds. These things are great. So, I've been looking through the hard and elite tasks on the spreadsheet to try and find any crafting skill requirement tasks. And there really are only three that I can find, which are the three diaries for the Fremenic, Mortania, and Candoran diary. You all need crafting levels that I don't already have, uh, which are 80, 84, and 85. So even then, I would only need to get to 80 for a plus 5 boost, and I'm already at 77. So I don't really know when's the best time to try and get my crafting level up to make these jewelry pieces that I've been talking about. But I do have a plan that I wanted to propose to you guys and get your opinions on, so here it is. Because this series is all about self-restrictions anyway, I think I'm going to add a self-made addition to this task, where every time I get a Demonic Gorilla's task, and I get a Zenite, so there's sort of two requirements here, because obviously if I don't get a Zenite from this task, then I can't make a piece of Zenite jewelry. But there are six Demonic Gorilla tasks, four in the hard tier, two in the elite tier. And by the end of the hard tier, I want to have made up to the Zenite bracelet. And by the end of the elite tier, obviously I would like the torture. So what I think I'm going to do is, every time I get a Demonic Gorilla's task, and I get at least one Zenite on the task, I'm going to allow myself to train my crafting up to the next level of Zenite jewelry. So for this first task, if I get a Zenite piece, I'm going to allow myself to make the Zenite ring, which means I would need to get to 84 to plus five boost. And then the next task that I get, if I get another Zenite, I'm gonna allow myself to make the necklace, which means I would need to get up to 87 to get a plus five boost to 92, and then so on and so forth. I don't know if you guys like that, it's the only thing that really makes sense to me because otherwise I would get these Zenites and literally never be able to use them because I'm never going to get a task that requires my crafting to be that high. So maybe let me know what you guys think in the comments, but that's what I'm feeling. For now we're just going to go back to the Gorillas and hope for a Zenite. I think doing it that way makes the most sense. Uh, that will also let me get my Amulet of Fury in a reasonable amount of time. I think if I were playing on a normal Iron Man, I probably already would have gone for 85 crafting to plus 5 boost for the Onyx Amulet. And a Fury is just such a massive upgrade and will actually make a lot of things significantly easier compared to the Glory. So yeah, I think that makes the most sense. Uh, if you have any ideas on that, either better ideas completely or better ways to tweak it. I just sort of came up with this right now and nothing set in stone. So like I said, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. But for now, it's not too relevant. We got to go and get the piece anyway. So let's get back to it. Second trip done. I ran out of prayer and I didn't get any prayer potion drops. I think when I come back, I'm going to bring way more prayer potions because now that I'm remembering how to do this, uh, I'm not actually taking that much damage. But I managed to get 15 kills that trip. Not too bad. Uh, going to go restock and go again. Oh! We're done! Kill number 38! And I got the Zenite! What the heck? That was so fast and exactly what I wanted. What the heck? My luck has completely turned around and I'm all for it. Let's go, dude. So now the problem becomes I haven't actually uploaded this episode yet, obviously. And therefore, I haven't got any feedback on my idea about combining the crafting training with these demonic gorilla tasks. And I did do the thing that I said, where if I got a Zenite on the task, then I would want to train my crafting. So I think I'm going to go ahead with it, and that'll be a nice way to end this episode. I'm going to do a bunch of crafting training, and I'm going to get at least 84, maybe even potentially 85 and make a Zenite ring along with an Onyx amulet. And then we will end the episode there with a couple of massive upgrades. Uh, and like I said, feel free to let me know what you think about that. But I feel like that's the best way to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I've pulled out a bunch of stuff in my inventory, as you can see, that I'm going to Alk. 
and hopefully I have enough money to uh, what you do if you don't know for iron men to get onyxes the best way is to buy a bunch of chaos runes for coins and then sell them to the Tazar people for Tockle and then buy onyxes that way I also have a few uh, Tazar items that I can sell so uh, hopefully I can make a bunch of money doing these Alks and we'll see how much money I have in the end but yeah, that's how I'm going to be getting my two onyxes for now, and that's what we're going to do for the rest of this episode. So, I would just like everyone to know that I am not very smart. Um, turns out I already have 77,000 chaos runes because of the 500 barrows chests I did the other day, and it only costs uh, 28,889 chaos runes worth of tockle to get one onyx. So I actually already had enough. I just, I alked all this stuff for nothing. But now I'm rich, so that's fun. And I'm going to go and buy the onyxes, just because I want to stare at them in my bank. And then I'm going to do some crafting training. I already have about 57,000 tockle from other things, you know, fight caves, and I sold a couple Tazar items to the shop. And now all I got to do is swap left click, sell 50, and then click a thousand times. So be right back. Either I did math wrong or the wiki was wrong, but I need more chaos runes. Oh, I know why. I did math wrong. Uh, because I forgot to factor in the Karamja gloves, putting it down to 260k instead of the base 300k. So, whoops. Either way, I'm probably going to want to buy another Onyx in the future for my next Zenite. So, it doesn't really matter. The 80,000 there will just go back into the bank for the next one. And I got my two Onyxes. And time to start doing some crafting. Now, I have some crafting supplies in the bank. I don't know how far it'll get me, but I'm just going to use everything that I have and see where that gets us. 78 crafting. 79 crafting. So, this is a little bit random, but I'm currently trying to charge some fire orbs while I do some giant seaweed farming, both to stack up some supplies in the bank for my crafting grind. And I noticed I was very close to an agility level, so I went and did uh, 20 laps over here at Priftinus to get 79 agility, which lets me use the elven drink, whatever it's called, looking it up, elven dawn, which gives a plus one agility boost, so I can use the 80 agility shortcut in the Taverly Dungeon, and that way I don't have to use uh, Agi Pots, because those are slightly more useful, and I can just go buy a bunch of these Elven Dawns and then use one every time I go to charge my fire orbs. I, like I said, kind of random, but uh, a little bit convenient for me. So I'm going to go buy a bunch of those, we're going to charge some fire orbs, we're going to farm some giant seaweed, and then we're going to do lots of crafting. When I came up with this plan, I was unaware of the fact that this NPC didn't actually have a trade option and you had to buy each of the Elven Dawns individually, so I'm a little bit upset, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I actually saw this Crystal Impling spawn right there. I don't think I've ever seen a Crystal Impling spawn in front of me. That was kind of cool. So, I've got all my Elven Dawns. I have 12,000 unpowered orbs in the bank, so I'm going to be charging all of them, and it's going to take me a very long time. I can do... So, each run takes about three minutes, and I can take 25 air orbs at a time, meaning that I'm going to be able to do about 500 air orbs per hour. So, just to charge the 12,000 is going to take me, like, 24 hours of gameplay just charging air orbs so that's not great and then I'm also going to need to uh, make or I need to go buy all the battle staves from the wizards guild and then make them and then out them for money to buy more so this could take a very long time but it's nice in AFK I do about you know a minute of running and then I just sit here and wait while I do other things so it's not too bad but I'm just gonna get started and, of course, in between, whenever my seaweed runs are ready, I'll be doing those as well. Just to bank even more crafting experience. So, yeah, this is my life for the next 24 hours. We'll see how it goes. 
Oh, and in case you're wondering, these poison spiders are aggressive because they're level 64 and uh, will often poison you as you're going to the fire obelisk, which is why I have the anti-poison in the inventory because the poison damage actually interrupts the charging and I like to look away from my screen and not have to re-click it every like 15 seconds. So yeah, it kind of sucks that I can't bring 26 orbs. Uh, I have to bring 25 because the uh, drink to boost the agility and the anti-poison and the runes, but yeah. In case you're wondering, that is how enemy aggression works in Old School RuneScape. Uh, certain enemies just are never aggressive, but the ones that are will stop being aggressive after you are over double their combat level. So for me, enemies that are level 55 will no longer be aggressive, but if they're level 56, they'll still attack me. So I decided to actually do the math on the experience and to go from where I'm at 15% through 79 to 85 crafting will take 11,447 fire battle staves, which means that even without the giant seaweed molten glass plan, I have enough banked crafting XP uh, in terms of the orbs. So I just need to make them. I'm still going to be doing my seaweed runs because I think technically that's faster experience wise, but... Uh, and I'll want it for the future anyway. But yeah, I definitely have enough banked experience. It's just a matter of converting it all into experience and then alking the battle staff so I don't lose all my money. Turns out I forgot that charging fire orbs cost three cosmic runes each, not one. So I needed to buy like three times as many that I had. And I keep finding crystal implings and not getting the thing. Okay. Just a little update for you guys, I have made about 3,500 of these fire orbs, so just over a third of the way through, and I realized that I got a bunch of runite bolts from something, I think it was the gorillas actually, and so I made a bunch of onyx bolts, enchanted them, and now I'm going to out them for even more money, and I think if I did my math right, Combining the Alks with the charged orbs with the teleports that I'm using, I'm actually going to get to 98 magic from doing this, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, just thought I'd give you guys a little update. And just a reminder, I can do about 500 orbs per hour at peak efficiency, and that doesn't include the giant seaweed runs, which I'm also doing. So it's probably even a little bit less than that. So those 3,500 orbs probably took me about eight and a half hours. And I've got probably about 16 hours to go, so. So, this is the start of day three of my crafting training. And I am halfway through charging my fire orbs. But today, I think I'm going to go and mine some sand. I've been farming giant seaweed. I have about 1,500. And you need six buckets of sand per giant seaweed for super glass make. So, I'm going to need to mine 9,000 buckets of sand, which is going to take a little while. But I'm going to do all of that and then do some super glass making and then blow even more unpowered orbs, which I'm just now realizing is going to be a little bit depressing seeing the stack go up instead of down. But that's fine. Uh, and then that'll give me a good judge of how many orbs I actually need to charge uh, because I know this 12,000 was already overkill and I never did any math, including any giant seaweed glass making, any of that. So I'm gonna go and do all my glass making and we'll see how far that gets me. And then we'll know how many fire orbs I need to charge and how many battle staves I'll need to make. So yeah, just gonna go and start mining. Okay, here we go, mining some sandstone. I've got my circlet of water, so I don't have to worry about the desert heat. I've got my Varric armor for the proc for the double sandstone. And I've got this little plugin that tells me how many buckets of sand I have in the grinder. So when this reaches like 10,000, I'll be done. Uh, I've already got enough seaweed for 9,000 buckets of sand worth of glass. And I want to get a little bit more than that. So yeah, 10,000 buckets of sand to go. And with this, we are just passing halfway on the sand. It has taken me about like an hour and a half. So another hour and a half to go. Uh, it's actually a lot faster than I thought it would be, so that's not too bad at all. Oh, 82 mining, just as we're about to hit the 9,000 buckets mark. Uh, I'm still gonna go for that 10,000 because I think by the time I actually get around to it, I'm gonna have enough that I'll need 10,000 buckets. But yeah, 82 mining, cool. Yo, and an elite clue from mining sandstone? I got, I got the whole squad here, let's go. Alright, there we go, 9,819 buckets of sand. I am going to go do all of these clues, and then we will do some super glass making. 
Hey, all the caskets done, including the Elite, which is very nice to see. And I am ready to do some glass blowing making. So here we go with the glass making. Uh, if you haven't seen this method before, you do it at the Ferox Enclave because technically you are in the wilderness. You can use a looting bag. So when you use your glass make and the extra molten glass goes in the ground, you can just pick it up and then empty your looting bag every once in a while. So it's very convenient. And yeah, I'm just going to use all 10,000 buckets of sand doing this and we'll see how far we get. All right, I'm done making all the glass. I have 15,000 molten glass, which according to this thing says 809,000 uh, crafting experience along with these orbs will probably be enough, I think. Uh, I'm going to go start blowing glass. I'm actually going to go to the little island off of Fossil Island and do some more seaweed runs while I blow the glass and edit some videos. So yeah, that's the plan. I think I should have enough. The orbs are gonna take quite a while to go through because I need to hop worlds to buy the battle staves at the Wizards Guild, which there's only five in stock per world, which means I'm gonna have to hop worlds like 1,200 times. Make all the staves, alk them. That's going to take a while. I don't want to think about that. For now, I'm going to go do the easy thing. Blow this glass into more orbs and do more giant seaweed runs and edit videos. Oh, 80 crafting. 81 crafting. 82 crafting. Well, it's been about a full day of crafting since I recorded an update that wasn't just a crafting level. Uh, so we have been working our way through the molten glass. I got 2,000 left here. I am uh, almost level 83 crafting. In fact, I will probably get it by the time that I end this clip. And I have a bunch of giant seaweed. It turns out that just farming your giant seaweed literally as soon as it comes up, like all day for a day and a half, gets you a lot of giant seaweed. So I am not concerned at all about running out of supplies. I have way more than enough for what I need. In fact, I went way too far on the orbs. I didn't anticipate getting this much giant seaweed. So I made more orbs than I needed to. And I have the ability to make even more orbs later for the next time I get a Zenite task. If I continue with this plan of uh, upgrading to the next level of Zenite jewelry every time I get a Zenite on a Demonic Gorilla's task. Uh, I will have plenty of crafting supplies for at least the next one, which is good. And I've even gone back to doing my other daily stuff, uh, like uh, farm runs, birdhouses, hispori, trees, all that sort of stuff. I'm trying to just get as much experience as possible because I realize that I am going to run out of potions very soon. So yeah, that's what's been going on. Uh, like I said, I'm almost through my molten glass. I got about another half level worth in the bank already. And then the ability to make even more with the extra giant seaweed that I've farmed. And I'm going to get a crafting level right now. 83 crafting. Cool. But yeah, having lots of extra orbs in the bank is always nice. Any battle staves that I get from killing stuff, or if I want to just buy the 30 discounted battle staves from Zaf every day, I'll just have the orbs already to make them into actual battle staves, and then I can elk them, and it's just like passive money and crafting XP. So having lots of orbs is good. Having extra giant seaweed is always going to be nice. So yeah, don't mind that at all. I will have to use quite a few of the orbs to finish off the crafting, uh, but uh, hopefully I don't have to use too many because like I mentioned earlier in the video, I will be uh, world hopping at the Wizards Guild buying staves and you can only buy five per world. So it is a lot of world hops to get that crafting XP. So the less of that I have to do the better, but yeah, just gonna keep going for now. So I've used all of my molten glass and I need to start buying some battle staves. So I'm going to be running back and forth between the Wizards Guild and the bank until I have enough battle staves for 85. I don't exactly know how many that is. I need to make 889 more to get to 84 and then I'll be able to see on my Runelight Tracker how many more I'll need for 85. So I'm going to do those 889 first and then figure that out after. Okay, here we go. This is it. 84 crafting. I need 2,458 more fire battle staves. So I got to get to buy in. But as you can see, we clearly have enough orbs. So yeah, essentially, I just have to buy them all, make them, and we're done. All right, finally done buying all my battle staves. I absolutely hate world hopping 
whether it's buying or selling to a shop or picking a spawn up off the ground. I just, it's just, it's just not fun. Uh, but now I get to do the fun part of just making the battle staffs, and this should be enough to get me to 85. So I will let you know when I have made 2300 battle staffs. I will say, this has taken me a lot longer than I expected. I've been doing nothing but crafting, preparation, and training for like five days now, uh, coming up on six. So, I, I still don't regret forcing myself to do this. It'll be very useful in the long run, but this did take a while. And now, admittedly, part of that was my own fault for making too many fire orbs while I was farming giant seaweed. But like I said before, they'll still be useful, so I don't really mind that. And these two upgrades are going to be absolutely massive, so it's still good. It just took a little longer than expected, and I am falling a little bit behind on the recording of videos, so hopefully we get some quick tasks coming up here. Here we go. Figured there was no more fitting way to get the level than by cutting these onyxes. 85 crafting. We've done it. I still need to get a plus 5 boost to actually make the fury, but... Hard parts out of the way, gotta go get a boost, I gotta go make this Zenite as well, but we've done it, I feel so good, I got 2,300 battle staves to Alk, which will Alk for 21 mil, so I will be rich once I get around to that, but feels good man, uh, let's go make this Zenite. I forget, uh, do I just use this on there, yes, fuse them, beautiful. Okay, I only have five orange spices left in the bank, so hopefully the boost doesn't take too long. I believe I have everything that I need to make both the ring and the amulet and enchant them. So I'm just gonna hope for a boost, and hopefully it doesn't take too long, and hopefully I don't run out of spice. Well, I got an 89 boost, so I can cut the Zenite and make the ring. Very cool. Enchant that bad boy. Ring of Suffering Acquired feels amazing. Now I need a plus five boost. Well, I didn't get the boost, so I gotta go get more spice. All right, got some more orange spice here. I'm hoping for that plus five boost. Yo, 90 crafting. I've done it. Finally, that took way too long. String that. Enchant that. Amulet of Fury Acquired. Oh my goodness, look at the stats. It's so good. Good! Words can't describe how good this feels. These are such massive upgrades. This is what I was using before for the setup, and as you can see, the glory is two worse on prayer, two worse on melee strength, 12 worse on all the defenses, and the explorer's ring, all the explorer's ring gives is one prayer bonus, so the suffering is twice as good in that regard, and has the 10 defensive bonuses, and it's not even imbued yet, which I am going to go and do while I edit. Just gonna AFK some Nightmare Zone, but yeah, this feels incredible. What a good way to end the video, too. Feels great. Uh, let's go roll a new task and see what we're doing next time. It feels kind of weird considering that I actually got the unique, like, six days ago, and I'm just now pressing the complete task button, but still feels great. Complete that task, and let's see what we're doing. Get one unique from Zalra. Okay, sure. Honestly, a very fitting task for right now that'll let me use both of the items I just unlocked. The Suffering is great for Zalra because I don't need to worry about re-equipping recoils. The Fury is a Tribrid amulet, so I don't have to worry about that. My armor upgrades have been insane since the last time I did Zalra. I got full Carols, full Arams. Honestly, I think this might have been the best task I could have possibly gotten, so very happy with this, but that'll have to be for next time. For now, though, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to go AFK some Nightmare Zone, get this ring imbued, do some editing, and then we will start with Zalra in the next episode. But this episode ended up taking me way longer to record than anticipated. Uh, so if you enjoyed it, maybe hit the like button, because that really helps me out with the algorithm. So, thanks. But yeah, that's it for me. I will see you guys in the next video. And a big thank you to all of my channel members, but especially big shout out to Alchemist BTW, Jack Staumer, and Zach Martin for the Tier 3 Big Spoon channel memberships. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you.